Be honest. Have you ever felt like you're just too busy and you got too much going on to figure out how to stop the overeating? One of the biggest reasons that smart, busy women overeat is that food is so easy. It is so accessible. It is so simple. And it's so tempting to use it to fill in the cracks and cover up the gaps of what you're not getting because you got so much going on. When you're tired and you're busy, sometimes figuring out or even thinking about making changes so that you'll eat less feels like too much work. What if I told you I have six tips? Each of them takes less than 10 minutes and that you can use these six tips to build a new non overeating lifestyle. I'll even share a free cheat sheet with you at the end of the video. I'm Dr. Melissa McCreary. I'm a psychologist, author, and the founder of TooMuchOnHerPlate.com, where we offer online programs and individualized coaching for smart, busy women who are ready to break free of overwhelm, overload, and overeating. I know you're busy, so let's get to it. Let's cover the 10-minute habits that you can use so that you don't overeat, even when you're busy. Number one, let's talk about night eating and a habit that you can use to minimize it. Now, eating at night is a major trouble spot for busy women. I want you to take 10 minutes and create a wind down ritual for yourself, a getting ready for bed ritual for yourself that includes some nice, relaxing things that are not food. Then I want you to set a timer for yourself so that you have time to actually practice this plan and get yourself into bed in time to get a good night's sleep. Number two, practice carving out 10 minutes for yourself instead of rewarding yourself with food. All or nothing thinking doesn't work and it particularly doesn't work for busy women. You do not need to take an entire week off in order to fit in some me time. Start paying more attention to what you really need and then block out 10 minutes, even five minutes to practice being kind and responsive to yourself. Small steps and little moments count, and when you take time for you, you will be less likely to turn to food or to overeating as a way to comfort yourself, reward yourself, or feel better. Habit number three, I want you to take your power back from stress and overwhelm. You can take 10 minutes to feel more in control. Claim 10 minutes at the start of every day to get clear on your priorities, your goals for the day, what your needs are going to be, and to get an understanding of what your schedule looks like. You might also want to use some of this time to sketch out a plan for your eating and to anticipate what you need to think about so that that can actually happen. When you take this time at the beginning of the day, you can get a sense of what your day looks like. And if your plan is looking too big or unrealistic, now is the time in the morning to make the changes or to delegate or to ask for some help or support. Habit number four is going to go a long way toward helping you minimize end of day eating. I want you to create a 10 minute transition between the end of your work day and the beginning of the rest of your day or your evening. This is gold. It is so important because usually what we do is we just jump from one thing to the next. Sometimes they even overlap. We're still thinking about what we just completed while we're trying to gear up and feel motivated to start the, the next section of work or responsibilities that await us. Wash your face, change your clothes, give yourself a little bit of time to switch gears and be present in the new situation, the new expectations, and the new responsibilities. Giving yourself even this little bit of time to transition and to get clear about your own needs and plans and even your hunger level can go a long ways towards curbing, overeating, or binging in the evening or before you go to bed. Habit number five is a little bit more big picture. I want you to give yourself at least 10 minutes every week to get clear on the week ahead and to take a look at what is going to be happening and what kind of responsibilities you have on your calendar or the things that are going to be coming at you. This allows you to be proactive instead of reactive to any kind of uh, overeating triggers or tough situations that might traditionally lead to overeating or emotional eating. When we're in reaction mode, when we're not feeling calm and planful and proactive, if you feel like you're endlessly chasing your to-do list trying to catch up, it's a recipe for overeating or making food choices that you don't feel good about. Give yourself a few minutes to review the week ahead and give yourself permission to say no. If you're seeing things on your list, on your calendar, 
that it's not really the right time for, or they don't belong there, or you don't want to do them. Use your weekly planning time to think about your eating over the week ahead. Think about how you'd like to eat, what your plan is for eating, and take a look at where you might hit some trouble spots. What are the challenges that you're likely to face or the hurdles or obstacles to your best efforts or the plan that you have in the back of your mind? Give yourself permission to be realistic and make adjustments in advance. You can make adjustments to your plan for your eating or you can make adjustments to your schedule, or your circumstances so that you can be more successful with what it is that you're trying to do. This weekly ritual is great for taking your power back from food, from stress, from busyness. Over time, as you look at your weeks ahead, you're going to start to see patterns. You're going to see the things that work really well, and you're going to notice repetitive things that never work for you. And as you start to notice these, it's going to be easier to make changes so that your life and your eating go more smoothly. Habit number six, start noticing when you're feeling that temptation to reward yourself with food. Start paying more attention to it. And when you find yourself in those moments where you want to grab something to eat because you deserve it or you feel like you want a reward or a treat, take a 10 minute time out. Just hit pause and see what happens. Leave the area, go do something else, do some stretches, take a walk, do some journaling. Tune in to what you're really thinking and feeling, whether you are actually hungry or not, and ask yourself what would feel good that isn't food. What are the ways that you could start to add more comfort, more rewards, more satisfaction into the few minutes that you have that aren't about getting something to eat? Here's one more thing you can do. If you have less than 10 minutes and you really want to zero in on what's driving your overeating, what's driving your hunger that isn't food, and if you'd like to get some customized tips and strategies that can help you with where you are in the journey, just click the link and take my free Hidden Hungers quiz and you'll get a lot of information about what's really going on with your overeating. I guarantee you we have things to talk about that have nothing to do with food.